thank you to everyone attending online today for this Genie Lunch and Learn webinar on clinical efficiency. It's with gratitude and respect that I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we stand here in Perth, the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation. I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Today's session will cover, amongst other things, the best tools and functions to save you time in your day-to-day -day admin. We will also include, as part of the presentation today, quick scripts, macros, checklists, and consult notes to letters. So first up is quick scripts. So what are quick scripts? Jenny's prescription module allows you to easily and quickly prescribe commonly used medications using our quick script functionality. The quick script menu stores your most commonly prescribed medications, allowing you to prescribe any item in the menu for any patient. When you are in your patient's clinical window, and you're adding a normal script, you can find the quick script button at the bottom center of the prescription window. Once you have completed filling in your script information, click this button to add your selected script to the quick script list. This will save it with all the relevant details that you have entered. Your quick script has now been created and it will then appear in the drop down menu on the left hand side. You can then select your newly minted quick script from the drop down menu, complete with any details you've entered. This can be done multiple times for the same medication with varying details. This is especially useful for specialists who may print the same strength dose and frequency prescriptions and it will be a huge time saver. QuickScript will appear as normal in the list with the other scripts the patient has been prescribed. Users can also make changes to the prescriptions dose and frequency etc from this window by slow clicking into the appropriate columns. Some other shortcuts when using quick scripts include alt click the add new prescription button, which is the blue plus sign. This will launch the quick list function. Alt click the I button in the prescription area of the clinical window. And this will give the user a progressive medication history information. If you alt click on the prescribes drug, this will display the class and generic codes. Alternately, you can right click on the prescribed drug and this will allow you to change its class. For example, S for single course, C for core medication or R for PRN frequent. Alt click on the quick script in the drop down menu will delete this option from the quick scripts. Please note you will receive no warning for this function and once it's done, there is no way you'll be able to undo the action. So please use it with care. Our next section for the webinar today is macros. Macros can be used when typing a short string of text is preferred. This short text will then expand into a longer text string. Always ensure that these strings are not something that a user might type by accident, thus ruining their text input. For example, don't use and for autonomic neuron disease. As it is a commonly typed word, try dot and instead. Where is it possible to use macros within Genie? They can be used in consults, in your letters, memos or checklists. They can be used in your SMS reminders or the email module and many more sections. In fact, you're probably more limited in Genie to where you can't use macros. 
By selecting a patient appointment and single clicking the red quill referral letter option on the left, you can find the macro section under the macro heading at the top. They also exist within the patient's consult window. You can add macros or edit the existing macros by hitting the Edit Macros button. This will launch the macro window. You can see the window has three sections, a code section, which are the characters you will actually type or the shortcut to gain your expanded text. We normally recommend using a period or another special character so that users can't type this by mistake. The expanded text section is what will be revealed once you have entered your code text. The owned by window can be set per macro entered. If you do not wish to share your macros with other users, this will ensure they do not accidentally access them and prohibit them from using Genie functions as normal. The macro can be created in the screen. Ensure to use something native to your purpose, not something generic that can be mistaken by other users, or will be typed by a regular user in the course of their usual Genie actions. To avoid this, we often use a period or full stop before the macro code. For example, using a shortcut of SJOGM will in this case be replaced with St. John of God Murdoch Hospital once we type the macro and then hit the spacebar. Please note the spacebar is essentially the macro activation and no text will expand until such time as spacebar has been pressed. You can also decide whether to share these with the other users in the practice or keep them native to your own user. Set the available to all in order for all Genie users on your database to be able to access your macros. You may edit this choice at a later date if your macros become popular or not. Click OK and your macro will be saved. Can you think of where you might apply your macros in your day-to-day -day Genie usage? You might use them to expand your specialist's medical terminology when they are writing or dictating letters. You might set up an SMS macro you can send to individual patients to let them know the script is ready for collection. You might use them as an email signature within the Genie email module or as the body of an email if you needed something to accompany an attached document. The next section for today is the exciting checklists. Checklists allow you to customize and standardize your data collection within Genie. They can be a helpful tool in keeping track of patient responses and provide you with the flexibility of adjusting the criteria to suit your specific practices needs. With the additional options of inserting your checklists into letters and operation reports, as well as reporting on them via quick reports, this section will allow you to take advantage of the convenience and excellent data representation that checklists have to offer. Checklists can be found and primarily used within the consult window, accessed by the Add Consult button. A list of pre-existing checklists are shown in the drop-down. Chances are someone within your practice, past or present, has added a checklist relevant to your practice discipline. You can choose to use from any of the pre-existing options or even edit one of them. Rather than choose from a pre-existing checklist, we're going to create our own by choosing the Add button at the bottom of the window. You see we have created an empty checklist ready for us to populate with our questions and fields. We must firstly select which input we wish to use. Options range from text field, number fields, check boxes, radio buttons, dates, images, and many more. We'll then hit the blue plus sign to add the selection. Similarly, we can delete the most recent addition to the checklist by using the dustbin icon alongside. You may first choose to add a header, then some text fields 
to add free text information. Some radio buttons, which only require a yes or no option. Or some number fields, which might require a numerical input. By selecting the arrow on the right hand side of each input, you can make most fields into a reference field and pull in certain information which has been inputted already into your Genie database. You can choose from any field within the patient table. The checklist can then be filled in manually using free text entries, numbers, or the aforementioned reference fields, which are denoted in green. If you do not wish to spend time creating specific checklists, you can navigate to the special menu in your Genie and then click Software Update. Then find the Checklist tab. Open the drop down for your practice, practice speciality. Check the box on the right hand side of your selection and click Import. Your new checklist will then appear in your checklist options as seen in the previous slides. If you've created a checklist that you're particularly proud of, you can share it with the rest of your Genie fraternity by using the upload button as highlighted here on the right. In fact, the checklist area in the special menu has been populated already by Genie users around the country. Can you think of where you might apply checklists in your day-to-day -day Genie usage? You might use them in nursing applications for pre-admission questions. You could screen your patients for COVID with a set of standard COVID-19 questions. How many of your pre-existing documents within or external to Genie could be replaced with a checklist? The final learning section for our webinar today is console notes to letters. Most specialists use either the console notes or they dictate letters. So by using Genie's inbuilt fields and expressions, a letter can be outputted using only your console notes. This is a time and money saver, as well as keeping your content consistent throughout your workflows. In the clinical record for your patient, choose the Add Consult button to begin a new consultation. Select your problem from the drop down menu and add your information into the four fields as per normal. Once completed, you should save your consult. Then open a referral reply letter or the red quill as it is affectionately known. Select your template from the template drop down or create a new one for this specific purpose. You can see on the left hand side, there is a column containing two choices, fields or expressions. If you select fields, you can expand the console dropdown to reveal the options within the table in question by using the small arrow. Please note, finding your specific information string within these fields can be tricky as there are so many options. It's worth also noting that if this area of Genie has no information entered, then your reference field may appear as blank. Create in the body of your letter using regular text, some headings. And please note that these will not be added automatically by invoking the fields or expressions references. Place your cursor below the requisite heading and click its appropriate field or simply click and drag it into position under the headers or anywhere else you might choose for that matter. If you wish to differentiate between your free text and the fields you've imported, you can hit the View References button. This is below the Format menu and looks like a pair of blue square brackets. This can be toggled on and off to show the differences between the free text and the field or expression. Once your fields are in place, you can find the Load Consultation 
option in the Expressions menu. This will allow you to choose the date of the consultation and making this change will change all of your fields to represent the fields within the date you have chosen. You can also toggle between them if you're unsure of which one to use. Save your template using the floppy disk icon in your referral letter screen if you're happy with your creation.